History of Konoyahar Academy. 1927, Konoyahar Academy is founded in M Mountain, H City by M Mountain H City by the millionaire Genzo Konoe. 1938, the construction of the school building, the old building, is completed. It took one year to make a school. Also, it was a school from the from the very beginning. I see. It wasn't like a repurposed, a, a, a rebuilt, a reused building, as I thought at some point. 1937. The clock tower is built to commemorate the school 10th anniversary. 1938. Konoyahara Academy's first headmaster, Gelson Konoe, passes away. 1945. During the Great Eight City Air Raids, a firebomb is dropped on the school. Both the school building and the clock tower are miraculously left unscathed. Hmm. It's like a god. Like a, a god that decided to take a sanctuary, let's put it like that, inside the school grounds. And is protecting the school for some reason. 1955, the school address changes due to the town's merger. 1958, the Konoyahar Academy Student Council was launched. It took 20 years for the student council to emerge. I mean, olden times, it's like that sometimes. 1987, the construction of the new building and the special building are completed and the old building is renovated. 1990, the clock tower stops working due to age. 1994, the old building is officially shuttered. And it, putting it like this, it's just looking more and more like a neglected god or something. Seeking revenge. There were likely some tragic incidents that occurred during those decades. Does anything here give me a hint as to the departed's identity? Neglected gods! Oh! Straight away! Achievement? No achievement. Oh, there it is. Took a while. I closed the Konohara Academy's brochure once I finished reading it. Then I take a sip of the coffee I brewed. Why is that um, sugar pot so small? <laughs> it's been three days since the end of the Sleep Mount Kashima's case, and there's yet to be a new notice. In the interim, I borrowed several documents from the school in a desperate bid to find any clues related to the departed's identity. The investigation is not going well. I feel like I'm treading water in the middle of the ocean, I can't see the shore. Instead, my sense of uneasiness keeps growing larger and larger. Time to get going. Mr. Conway called me in today. I better head to the school. I'm feeling much better today as I, than I was last time, so I decided to take my car. After crossing the, ste the steep slope, the school grounds finally come into view. Mr. Connor is already left by the time I arrive at the faculty room. Without any direction, they decide to go to the getaway, to go to the infirmary. But just then, someone asks me to fill in for an absent teacher. I'm still not used to standing in front of a class. However, I do my best to remain professional and struggle through it, teaching a lesson cobbled together from stray bits of my knowledge. Uh, can I ask a question? A female student timidly raises her hand. It's not related to the lesson, though. What is it? I heard you're investigating the departed. Does the departed really exist? Blissful ignorance in the face of fear? Or declared panic and a chance of survival? I mean, they're teenagers. If I just say like, oh, the departed does exist, like, are they gonna take precautions not to get hurt? No, they're gonna grab the cameras, they're going to YouTube. 
the 1990s YouTube. So, like, live TV. Um, they do. <laughs> they certainly exist. My answer causes a stir among the students. <laughs> Mr. Kono and Sakamoto would probably give me a massive glass if they knew, but I saw little points in line to the kids. I just hope they will, this will make everyone behave more cautiously. Nah. Maybe we will actually decrease the number of victims. Nah. The chime signaling the end of class sounds. Say my goodbyes, I leave the classroom, walk towards. I mean, it's the same thing as like setting up a fire in the woods. Like, you think people will learn, like, oh, there's a wildfire in the woods, we should get out of here and pay attention. No, we're gonna all gather around and see the forest burn. Like, people fearing tragedy so easily. It's not even on purpose. School is over. Time to start. It's not on purpose, and I can't hate anyone for doing that. Because it's not their fault, it's just human nature for some reason. None of the mark bearers will be here today, since I didn't tell anyone I was coming. Had I just made this decision earlier, they'd be still alive. Mom is one step behind. Mr. Konoi should be back by now. I better go to the faculty room. There's no one to talk to. Uh, bag enhancement, three lost souls. Three lost souls? What? No. Oh, okay. There's no one in the infirmary. No, I'm alone. Oh, never mind. The notification lights on my phone is blinking. Looks like I got a voicemail. I press the button to play the audio. Hello, it's me, Kashiwagi. Hello. How are things going with your investigation, Mr. Yashiki? I'm in Osaka right now for work. I'd like to come back and help as soon as, I know, as I'm done. But sadly, I'm shooting a music video, and then we have a concert after that. I'll be gone for at least a week. Sorry, I can't be of much help. That reminds me, is Sho doing a good job? I ask him to help out in my absence. He's got good stamina, so I'm sure he's doing a much better job than me. I really wanted to be there to help you finish this thing. Such a shame, really. But give me a call if you ever need my help. I'll come flying to you, bye bye! This is a big difference, because I know that she can die on the ending of the second chapter. So I wouldn't even have this message. I would just be me alone with the dogs barking on the background. Uh, faculty? Hello, Yashiki. Sorry for making you wait. Has there been any new notice? No, I didn't call you because of that. I just wanted you to direct the report. I just wanted you to direct the report to results in the Sleaf Mart Kashima's case to me. Go ahead. You may begin. Do your bidding, peasant. I'm given a general report about the Sleaf Mart Kashima's case. It's also been decided that the broken glass and the dirty floor in the art room will be left as it is for the time being. Really? I can't blame them for considering the state of the old building. I see. He just kept getting worse, huh? Diamonds being attacked and the departed's identities to elude us. Are there any clues that could help unravel this mystery? I've been digging through some of the school's documents, but I couldn't find anything linked to the departed. Mind lending me the other documents of interest, if you have them. I'm especially interested in the older ones. I've barely seen any, which is odd for a school that's got in 70 years of history. How about that? I assume we've learned that our school was firebombed in an air race during the war, right? Aside from the old building and the clock tower, everything was burned down. That includes the building that stored the, the school documents. I'm trying to remember some detail that someone brought up. I think it was Manly, 
back when he first uh, covered the original Deathmark. There was some kind of proven speculation that H City, which is the city that this place uh, is based itself, this game is based itself, is uh, actually Hiroshima. So the idea of the air raids, uh, like hovering over this, hover up, like this air raids and the and the war and stuff, is probably the second war. Second World War, that is. Hmm. And that's that's pretty much it. It's just I don't know, just a detail to fit in the general story of the game. Aesthetic. I don't know. Even without the physical documents, you can always ask people who might recall the story you're interested in. Are they dying in a bomber? Oh. You know anyone offhand who might remember? Let's see. If the previous headmaster was still in good health, there'd be a prime candidate. He was curious about Konehara's academy's past and did some digging on his own. Where is he now? Six feet under. He died of a heart attack last month. That's why he is the previous headmaster and I am the current one. Oh, okay. Shay, Yashki. I want you to be completely honest with me. Are you confident you can solve this case? Depends on my luck. Depends on luck, really. I'm not gonna say no, because... Last time I did that, I got a game over. Depends on my luck. Given what you're up against, I can understand why you chose to rely upon God. But still, do your best first, and then let God do the rest. Just bear this in mind. There are only so many strings that can pull if people continue to disappear. I'll be held responsible for the fallout, and you'll be removed from the case. To put it bluntly, our investigation will be stopped. I'll remember that. That's all I wanted to say. Oops, there was actually one more thing. This morning, Doryu, the student council president, asked me if you'll be coming to school today or not. Why don't you go see her? Uh, where is she? Here? Yeah, probably. Both Doryu and Michio are in the student council room when I arrive. Hello, Mr. Yashiki. Uh, thank you for the, for the other day. When you were possessed. Yeah, I remember that. I made a thumbnail about it. I have to make sure you two be wanting to hate me. Uh, probably... Some people will hate me for covering the goods, but I, I, again, as a teenager, a pretty young lady, I have to continue playing the game. Looks like Michio's fully recovered. She doesn't seem sick or dispirited. Mr. Kone said you're looking for me. Oh, that was. Hmm. Yes, there's something I'd like to discuss with you. Though I don't feel like saying it myself. Micho, can you help? <clears throat> Is it just scared the cat he made? Alright, take a look at this photo first. A picture is worth a thousand words. What is it? Ooh. Oh, it's the guy on the um on the intro screen. Yeah. You guys have a pool, really? Micho shows me a photo of the pool at night. I have to say, the empty water at night is pretty eerie. What is that? It's a bunch of accordions! There's something pale floating above the water surface. The photo is too blurry to make out what it is, but it looks like the puffy, swollen face of a human. It's called Waterlot. I was the one who took this photo, the ghost photo. The swimming club came to us to share their concerns about the pool ghost. I snuck into the school a while ago and took this picture. That's literally the trespassing. Oh come on, the bit uptight. I need you to try and keep the student body calm. 
I still can't believe I managed to get this map though. My supernatural sense is truly something else. Mitchell grins from year to year. Seems like she hasn't learned anything after what happened to her during the Kashima's case. Are you telling me to investigate the spirits? Exactly. I've heard there have been a lot of strange incidents in the swimming club recently. If a spirit is behind those incidents, we have to do something about it before it gets worse. Do you mind investigating it for us? Uh, yeah, only until a new notice arrives. Come, like, I have a priority. Thank you. Now tell me more about the spirits. Where should we start? Um, the description of the side quest, if you don't mind. Uh, when did you start? I believe it started after the first round Takai died down. <clears throat> Takai? What first? Care to elaborate? Oh, you haven't heard about that? Kyoko Takai was the first notice victim. While she is said to be missing, the rumors say she was killed by Hanako of the toilet. Is she talking about Ribbon? Now that I think about it, so I never actually learned who Ribbon was. Horiko she told me about Ribbon. She used to be in the brass band club with Izumi, and the two of them bullied Hanako together. The microphone a bit. Sorry about that. Oh uh, yeah, I can't deny that. She was on bad terms with Akai ever since we were first years. They were. Something happened between them. I was just Akai's personality. She was always an, atten an attention seeker. She found a clique and have them found over her. She really loved that. Akai was invited to join the circle one time, but she f refused. So she was a loner, but she still bullied because of out or something. How are you like an attention seeker and a loner? How does that work? Is that what turned the relationship out? Oh no, just uh, Hanako circle, like Hanako, the other girl that I forgot the name. Okay, they invited her to be friends and she refused. I get it. It's just a hunch, but Izumi's bullying of Hanako might have escalated because he had Takai by his side. They had a shared bond of hatred. I'm trying to open my water bottle. Why did I do? Ah, it's frozen. Hello. Ah. ah. It was frozen. Hmm. It's bitter. Blech. Frozen lemonade. Hmm. Takai was known for a flashy red ribbon. Everyone knew she wrote it all the time, and she did care because it was given by her boyfriend, or so I heard. What's crap? She really treasured that thing. When you touched her ribbon from behind for fun, she got really angry. They're her boyfriends. That's enough, Micho. You're flying off on attention now. Takai doesn't have anything to do with the pool case. Did, didn't you guys just say that she had? I oh, know she just okay. Never mind. Um, strange incidents. How about that? When they're swimming, all of a sudden they feel like they're being suffocated and almost drown. That kind of thing has supposedly happened more than ten times. Too much of a coincidence, don't you think? But the spirit was trying to suffocate them with a curse. Let me mix this a little bit. I have some sugar, but maybe I didn't have add enough to my lemonade. But we still have no idea who the spirit is. Some say it's a girl. I don't don't look like a girl. During the club activity, some of the swimming club members said they heard a weird female voice. Okay, it might be. Some also claim. Uh, okay, I'm judging. <laughs> who am I to say? I'm just following the game. Some also claim that they saw a severed head at night, like the one in that photo. That's how we know. Please take care of the rest for us, Mr. Yashiki. I'll try investigating it later, at night. Later. Right, I forgot. Right here. Right there. Mitchell sure writes something on her desk. Take this. This is the Dawn's number and my phone number. 
come if anything happens. Or if you're feeling lonely. <laughs> no, thank you. Jeez, Michiho, don't be a weirdo. <laughs> I can't help teasing him, you know? He's way too serious. I quickly leave the student council room, putting distance between myself and the cheerfulness. And her cheerfulness. The other one just standing there, but it's fine. While awaiting the next notice, the student council asked me to investigate a spirit haunting the pool. Several students reported having odd incidents and nearly drowning, leading some to assume a spirit was involved. Before the incidents, a student, Takai, went missing. I also heard a voice at the pool. Are you saying that Takai didn't die because of... No, but she was targeted by Hanako. But maybe she didn't die to Hanako. We never saw anything about her. She just exploded. I don't know where. On the background. Oh, so let's go to the special building. I spot a familiar looking boy while glancing over the spacious library. Once he noticed my presence, he immediately approaches me with a smug smile on his face. Well, well. Look what we have here, if it isn't Mr. Yashiki. Big congratulations to you for surviving the oh so terrifying Sleep Mount Kashima. I expected nothing less from a renowned spirit doctor. I was just lucky. I think so too, actually. We are blessed by the goddess of fortune. Unfortunately for Mr. Diamond, he couldn't escape his growth faith. I heard he's hospitalized at K Hospital. You should know a lot about my situation, don't you, Abe? Abe? I don't know. Don't you think it's time to for you to tell me what sort of tricks you have up your sleeve? Oh goodness me, to think you would interfere with my secrets. I'm attracted to you. Oh, Mr. Spirit Doctor, and you're drunk. Well, no, not, not really. You're just all over the place. I'm... Like, it's not like I'm attracted to you, but to begin with, you're a kid. And second... Like, since last night, you're always in front of me. So I'm not attracted to you, I just have to interact with you by osmosis. I... it's... Can you stop that? You're creeping me out, little stalker. You're basically meant to... Oh, God damn it. I don't dislike the sound of that. Hey, don't dodge my question. How did you... What a silly question. I don't see any need to answer that. Don't you know? What makes a mystery fascinating and captivating is the fact that it remains a mystery. Mm. I, I kind of disagree with that. I was reuniting my arguments, but I don't have one. I just... I don't know, I disagree with that. Let me mold it. Let me mold it. Let's keep a relationship this way. I'm in no moods to alter it. <laughs> now if you excuse me. With a choco, Abe leaves the library. Library. There. Hmm. I got no idea what to make of that kid. I doubt we'll ever understand each other. I feel like I'm talking to an alien. What is that sound? Is that a frog? I think... I think there's a frog outside. It's making sounds. I know it's a bird. Never mind. It's a different bird. I step out of the library after that conversation, feeling rather frustrated. The school will be closing shortly. Our students please promptly vacate the school grounds for today. Okay. I guess that's enough of my evening investigation. I returned to the infirmary to prepare for the night's investigation. You could just put me there, but sure. Skeleton! Might as well wait until the sun sets. Since I'm dealing with the spirits here, they should appear at night. 
Despite having no appetite, I forced down some cup noodles I brought on my way here to replenish my energy. I top it off with a cup of instant coffee with extra sugar. Mmm. Hmm. Doesn't compare to the stuff I brew myself. Coffee is still coffee though. It's a hot black drink chock full of caffeine and chlor chlorogenic acid. Tell myself that I gulped out the drink. Chlorogenic acid. The night is getting late. Time to head out. I got a call. Where's it from? Who do you think it is from? Hello? Good evening, Mr. Yashki. It's me. He may call I thought it was the other one, but sure. From the student council. Why do you need to call me this late at night? There's something I wanted to tell you. Remember how earlier I said Takai had nothing to do with the pool case? Actually, it's the opposite. She's the main cause. Did you find out something? Ask one of Takai's friends at the dorm. Turns out Takai used to be in the swimming club. Hang on. Wasn't she in the brass band club? She quit the club after injuring herself during the practice. After that, she joined the brass band club. But apparently, she still often came to watch the swim club practice. I heard she asked one of her friends in the club to let her swim from time to time. Because of that, the swimming club members kept away from her. So she just did her own thing. There's more though. There's more, though I don't know if it is related to the case or not. Right before she died, she apparently lost her ribbon in a pool. Didn't she love the ribbon a lot? It's like that would have been rough on her, huh? Yeah, her she was flipping out. She searched all around the pool, the locker room and the members' bags, but never found it. She was even saying she drained the entire pool if she had to. They were having a hard time stopping her. Did she find her ribbon in the end? Nope. And after that, they now disappeared. Dorio stops talking. I guess that's all there is to the story. Thanks, I'll, it'll help my investigation. You should be apologizing. For, I should be apologizing for troubling you. Please call Michio if anything happens. She'll come flying. Anyway, have a good evening. I'm still not sure whether Kyoko Takai is connected to the pool case. Never get a better understanding once I go to the pool. This is literally what just happened, okay. Save the game. Uh, ah, fine, whatever. No one here. The side those two have gone home. Their ability to take action is rather surprising. It's because they're both in student council. There is no need to stay here any longer. Let's go inspect somewhere else. I mean, I've never been to student council. But I heard from some castmates that were... That it is outstanding, like, how you go from having a normal life in school, just being stressed with work and class activities and stuff, to suddenly having a lot of people just dumping problems on you, that is not just students. Like, it's literally things you don't expect for, like, a teenager to deal with. I leave the special building and head to the pool. After a bit of walking, I arrive at the destination. The entrance is blocked by a low palisade. Palisade? Palisade. Obviously, given that school hours are over, it's locked. I forgot to borrow the key. Ah, no choice but to bulldoze my way through. I can just jump. Putting my feet on the palisade, I managed to shuffle myself over in one try. This is the pool in question. 
I'm not sure if a spirit will appear tonight. But let's take a look around first. The bucket on the floor brush. The bucket and floor brush have been left out. Did someone forget to put them away? The vandals. Anything weird outside for no reason, no? Which game was that? Was it Death Mark? Oh no, it was um, the last observation duty. It had a scene like this. Yeah, it's the observation duty that has a pool. It'll have a camera under the pool as well. In one of the other occurrences, uh, the buildings on the background, one of them will duplicate and will look like a, a big uh, monument. A giant big black monument on the background. What else? Yes. Uh, there are benches by the pool with dead insects scattered atop them. How is the dead insect? It's like a motive. Mm. <laughs> There are some benches by the pool. Judging by all the mold growing on them, these benches must be pretty uncared for. I, maybe it's just the humidity, but mm -hmm. sometimes it is. Each lane has a diving board. I mean, no. Uh, if it was like lime or something, I wouldn't understand. Never mind. Oh, I found something. It's a tooth. Are they getting bigger? Um, anything else of note? I thought it was something there. There is something there. Isn't that like... There's like... Some kind of monuments there. Like a chimney, there's a little house. It's square. I don't know what that is. Get the mouse away. Cool, cool. I see nothing on the surface of the water, settling on the severed heads. The water is cloudy and clumps of algae floats atop it. I guess no one is using the pool these days due to the incidents. Algae. What's that voice? Oh. Oh, hi. You are enormous. Who's that? Who's there? Oh, it's the... the... Uh, oh. Okay. I get it. Oh, come on. Please work. Jeez, to die like that. Uh... Oh, God. I aim my flashlight towards the source of the voice. There I spot a bloated ghost that looks like a drowned corpse. Such an awful sight to behold that I can hardly keep myself from looking away. Now that I take a closer look at her, she's wearing a Konohara Academy uniform. Judging by the hoses wrapped around her body, she looks like a victim of Hanako. Is this spirit of Kyoko Takai, the missing person named in the first notice? Uh. Thank Jesus. Like, I'm gonna say that this is why embodied dysmorphism is my favorite form of horror. It's like, it's not dismemberment, it's not the random monster, it's not like, like the killer jump scaring you in the face. It's this. And parasites. I also don't like parasites. It's not enough to like stop me from playing the game, but it's enough to creep me out. And and this, Ugh. <laughs> hell yeah! I start to get a strange chills all over my body. Shit, won't be able to endure this for long. Like I keep saying, save me over and over again. It's like she's begging for forgiveness. Hanako's no longer here though. She can't forgive her, not save her. How do I save her now? The only thing I can use at the moment are the buckets and the deck brush by the poolside. Wow. 
Well, we'll start with that. Uh, fuck it. Scoop up air? Scoop up bull water. Air. I mean, if the idea is that she was pulled underwater by Hanako and is made to drown. Mm. Scoop up a floating brush. Floating rubbish. Scoop up floating rubbish. Scoop up rubbish in the water. Um. What? But, okay. What's going on there? I try scooping the air with a bucket several times. Well, uh, we will be saved if I do this. Nope. I start to get a strange chills all over my body. Guess that's not the right way to save her. I need to try something else. Okay. Try scooping up pool water with a bucket. Will you be saved if I do this? The guy spirit stares at the pool, murmuring something in a relieved voice. Oh, he was right. I know it was just a dumb hunch, but maybe I stumbled on the right answer. Okay. More. Did she say there more? I guess I need to do more to save the soul. I'm trying! I can't save you if you're trying to kill me. Might as well just turn my back and leave and just have you do whatever you do. Fuck it. Uh, scoop up water near the surface. Scoop up wa deeper water. Uh, go with the hardest one. Try putting the buckets deep in the water before scooping. The bucket is so deep in the water that it's quite full. I slowly lift it. I guess she wants me to get the buckets deeper in the water when she says there more. In that case. How's that? I scoop deep like you want it. The guy spirit stares at the water inside the bucket. Oh! I follow her gaze and see something floating inside. What is this? It's a flashy red ribbon. I think I remember something about Takai being a member of the uh, organization Dragon Ball. No, Takai wearing a flashy red ribbon. Is this what you've been searching for all this time? Just likes the right choice. I heard Sakai disappears while she was looking for her favorite ribbon. She was probably killed by Hanako before she ever found it. The Kai spirits laughs happily as she disappears into the darkness. Is there a memorial for her somewhere? Now the school brushed it aside. As disappearance. So this probably isn't a memorial. I can give it to her family. Just mailed it. Like an anonymous letter. Like I'm sorry for your daughter. But then they're gonna raise a fuss about it. Hmm. And I got a warning that if more attention gets around this, I'll probably lose my job. So, keep it quiet. To regret that a Kai's lost so bar has been dispelled. She shouldn't appear here again. Let's go back to the infirmary. Yeah, side quest complete. Kyoko Takai has been added to the character file. Can I see it? Um, how do I... why? There it is. 
Kono had a second year who flaunted the ribbon she'd gotten from her boyfriend, first victim of the departed. She was in a swimming club until her injury fall okay, same thing. Kane won herself after death, searching for the last ribbon. Hello. See nothing on the surface of the water, certainly not the severed head. The water is cloudy and cl okay. More algae. Ah, looking. I think it's just like the school perimeter wall that has been covered by the woods. Yeah. Because there's another piece over there. It looks like it goes further this way. It might be just like perimeter. And there's a piece of the fence. On the other side, I can't see because of the trees or something. Uh, formally? This concludes the requested investigation. Yet, the night is too young. What should I do next? What the? Oh, whoa, whoa! For some reason, I feel a set of eyes on me. There's something on the other side of the window. <laughs> Someone's having fun. Why is that open to begin with? Was that... We departed. No, it was your mom. Who do you think it was? Why were they here, though? There's an unfamiliar item on the desk. This is... The departed's notice. Dear student council, I will kill you tonight. I'm watching hiding in the school. Your beloved the departed. Student council. Students. Student council. Did they mean Michio and Doryu? Shit, what do I do? I need to choose my waifu. First things first, I need to check whether they're safe or not. Better call them now. Save the game. Finals what? I take out the note Micho gave me this evening. And then I punch in the number written on the paper. Micho is in answering. Now then let's call the door and check if they're in the rooms. Konehara's Academy Student Dormitory here. The languid voice of a middle-aged woman is transmitted into the receiver that is pressed against my ear. She must be the door manager. My apologies for calling this late at night. My name is Yashiki. I'm one of the teachers of Konohara Academy. Have Himeko Doryu and Micho Kino Kino Kinokawa returned home. Hold on. Mr. Yashiki, right? So you're the teacher who's been hitting on this too? Well, no. What? Ah, playing dumb, I see. I went around from the kids here, you know? They say there's a four-eyed middle-aged teacher who's been hanging around Doryo and Kitokawa an awful lot. It's kind of the other way around, for sure. Hang on a second, this is... My goodness, how immoral. There have been one or more incidents, teachers trying to put their hands on these students, innocent students. Indecent... Oh, what? Hello? Just admit it already. That's what your intentions are, aren't they? It's getting me nowhere fast, just pre prejudice against me. Why is this happening now all of all times? What can I do to make her listen to me? Uh, convince her half of your motives. Tell the lies at a risk. Bring up Mr. Conway. Uh, I mean, he's inside the school. If anything, he has more power here than anywhere else in the city. I'm investigating a case at the request of Mr. Conway. If you refuse to cooperate, what's your, that's your choice, but I'm letting you know that I'll be hearing about it. Are you alright with that? Huh? Oh, hold on a second, you're joking, right? 
Why don't you try calling him and see whether or not he thinks it's a joke? So what are you gonna do? Your call. Ah. The door manager remains silent. Merely mentioning the name Conway seems to be a pretty effective tactic within the school. Ah, my apologies. You see, the female dormitory has been getting a lot of weird calls lately. I didn't mean to offend you at all and just take precaution for the girl's sakes. You know that, right? Sheesh, now she's finally willing to listen. So, why are Doryo and Kinokawa? To tell the truth, both of them haven't returned at all, it's already past curfew. Excuse me? I always warned the kids that they need to get back by the curfew, but they... The door manager offers up a bunch of half-fast excuses. She obviously just doesn't want to be held accountable. They actually left after coming back. I let him go since it was before the curfew. He didn't do anything wrong. She's... okay. Did you ask where they were going? No, I respect her privacy. But I distinctly remember that Kirokawa was talking about the phone before she left. Judging by the conversation, I assume she was invited out by someone. Okay, I'll try looking for them. In only what the door manager attempts to say after that, I immediately hang up on the phone. This is bad. <clears throat> Voice crack. Stifling my mounting anxiety, I quickly try to organize my thoughts. I got a phone call and left the dorm. During the target out by a phone call is a trick to the part that has used over and over again. Knowing that is probably a sign that they're being lured back into the school grounds. I need to find them quickly. Why did I just save again? The two of them have to be at school somewhere. Where to look first? Come. Place connect past and future. That feeling just now, and that whisper, is the same voice that told me to pretend to be Mr. Hirose during the Sleaf Mount Kashima's case. Come to the place that connects the past and the future. That voice is trying to guide me somewhere. It's the connecting corridor! God damn it! Let me. How do I run? Oh, there we go. I don't know if I'm missing a tooth or not. I should have checked. The flashlight. Your. How can I talk to you now? A female doll is standing in the darkness. You're the one who called me, right? I forced the words out of my tensed mouth. So, a place that connects the past to the future. It must be this corridor that connects the old and the new buildings. What the hell are you? The doll only responds with a hollow voice. We simply stand facing each other, both of us motionless as time passes. Meanwhile, Doryo and Michiko are too easy thinking about it. Hey, why'd you call me? Blah. Blah. B huh? What are you saying? What is she trying to say? You you know, just... They have a different context nowadays. We just go plapping everywhere. Place the bell rings. Okay. My... The doll in the red dress disappears, blending into the darkness. What does she want to tell me? Place where the bell rings. My... What is in there? I don't know, but I'm looking for tooth. The doll said the play- oh, god damn it. Uh, courtyard. Oh, I can go here. Oh. Good evening. Hmm. A massive statue of the Guardian of Inari stands here. It's darkened, which gives off the impression that it has been here for quite some time. Boxes might be the messengers of Inari. Oh, but 
is it, it isn't a time to make a wish. Hold on, I'll take it back. It's the perfect time to wish for safety. I close my eyes and clap my hands. I hope Michio and Dorio will be safe. How's that sound? The fox looks the same as before. It's just my imagination. Why am I getting the chills then? Suddenly something falls out the fox's mouth. It's... It's actually... Well placed. It's a tooth. It actually makes sense this time. The explanation is really confusing. I got a bad feeling. Are they safe? We need to find him quickly. Anything else? I can't... I can shuffle, but I can't move the flashlight up and down. Hmm. The place where the bell rings, huh? There's only one possibility. The clock tower. A landmark of Konohara Academy that was built to commemorate the school's 10th anniversary. Having fortunately escaped the fiery ravages of war, it became the symbol of the school along with the old building. The clock stopped working seven years ago, so there is no way the bell can ring. But I've often heard the bell since coming here, especially on occasions when the party's presence is strong. The bell is ringing. That screen just now was Idoryu. She's nearby, probably inside a clock tower. The door of the grand clock tower is slightly ajar. Almost as if it's beckoning me to enter. The moment I put my hand on the rusty doorknob, the double doors fling wide open. What exactly am I seeing here? Okay, now. Both Dorio and Michiko are lying on the floor in their underwear. Okay, I am re-recording this because I flopped up the audio during the stream, as it happens. But on the stream, I censored this part. This answer was really bad. I'm gonna play something better. But let me tell you, everyone is censoring this. It is literally Doryu and Michiho on their underwear with the butts in the air. I'm not showing this on video. Everyone is censoring this. The only guy who didn't censor this got a flag. If you wanna see teenage on their underwear, you, you know where to find it. <laughs> I'm sorry. What the hell happened here? You guys okay? <laughs> yes. The order replies weakly. She can't think straight. Um, Mr. Yashki. Misho groans and calls my name. Can you stand? I don't think so. I can't move my legs and arms. A huge blob is wriggling around them, restraining their limbs. Looks like a mass of slime mold. I'm going to rip it off. But wait! Don't provoke the bugs, they'll bite. A swarm of insects are crawling on their skin. Some are venomous, including the set beats. If this is the part is doing, then these are likely no ordinary insects. There are bound to be a massive consequence if I mess this up. This girl's gonna end up like Diamond. Ugh. I better be extremely careful in take this, taking this next step. What should I do first? Well, I'm gonna go the same route on the stream and help Micho. On stream, I roll a dice and. Like, the winner was Michio, so whatever. 
Plus to remove the slime mold that is binding Michiko's limbs. And then I carefully brush the bugs from the body. Can you walk, Michiko? Barely. Help Michiko get on her feet to take her to the clock tower. Out of the clock tower. Not to the clock tower. She's already inside. Thank you. We should be safe here. I'll go help Doryu now. Wait here. I return to the clock tower and perform the same task in the same exact order to help Doryu. Lastly, I scoop up the uniforms from the floor and run out front run outside with her. Hmm. I close the doors behind me and heave a huge sigh of relief. It all went well. While the two are getting dressed, I look up at the clock tower. It is just a coincidence that they were putting there. I don't think so. There must be a reason for it. And I calculated one of that. Mr. Yashiki, we're done changing. I have to ask them what happened. Before that, let's go back to the infirmary. We could go to the... Is that like a chemistry lab? With a shower or something? Once we arrive, I make them some instant coffee. Both of them sip their drinks in silence. It sucks. Their faces have regained some color. Looks like they've calmed down a bit. They should be able to talk now. You know what you should start doing, Ashki? Bring chocolate. Say, Ashki, I'm fine now. Feel free to ask us anything you need to know. That goes, that goes for me too. Despite the trembling voices, they're trying to be strong. Honestly, I'd rather not make these kids recall those such painful events, but I don't have any choice. Time to figure out what happened in the clock tower. Um. Tell them about the spirit on the- Nah, it's gonna be the last thing. Come on, be sensible. Why they came back to the school? The door manager told me you were invited out by someone. Who called you? And it was you. Me. You asked us to help you because we were trapped in a clock tower. So him and I went there. I think that's probably the departed pretending to be me in order to lure you out. Are you serious? Then they're a tricky enemy. What happened in the clock tower? The door was open when he arrived at the clock tower. The moment we stepped inside, a swarm of insects attacked and they just stripped you out of, out of your clothes. They were crawling under your uniform, so we took them off and tried to get the insects out of us. I started panicking, and everything went blank after that. They were just normal insects, I wouldn't have been so scared, but I saw some venomous centipedes among them. My limbs refused to move when I tried to escape. And then you came, just when we were at the end of our ropes. You really saved our lives. Okay, um, yeah. I tell them what I've managed to resolve. I've managed to resolve the situation with the spirit in the pool. Thank you, Mr. Yashiki. To think that the spirit was really Takai. So she was murdered by Hanako and then became a spirit. I'm scared to think about a spirit giving birth to another spirit. Takai isn't the only victim that turned into a spirit. Shinji, who was killed by Kashima, was haunting the gymnasium. I have to wonder if this entire series of awful events was set in motion by the departed. Also, your reward for completing the side quest. Take this Damascus sword. It is enchanted with the power of... I just came up with that. Uh, I think it's just plus one. Never mind. Um, I, f I fumbled that so hard, I'm cringing. Uh, why do I even try? Was the departed the one who sent those insects to, to attack us? Most likely. I saw notice that they were trying to kill you too, student council. Why us? I might have an idea why. Do you mind telling us? 
So I've noticed that the Departed's targets falls into two categories. People directly targeted by the Departed, like you were, and those who are targeted by other spirits. Everyone who's been directly targeted by the Departed have all been people I'm close with. Then that means... We were targeted because we're close with you. I think so. Now oh, I see. I'm sorry, Doryu. Sorry, Micho. You wouldn't have this horrific experience if I hadn't asked you for help. I'm a curse. I shouldn't have gotten involved in this case. Then Diamond wouldn't have haven't gone through such terrible things. My chest tightens as feelings of regret fall up inside. Am I... Getting bullied? Am I getting bullied? By his 10,000 year old child? Are you kidding me? Slap it across the face. What? I'm getting bullied. We were safe because of you. Told you. You still saved our lives. That's not something that just anyone would have been able to do. Oh, god damn it. You can't... <sighs> Copyright. I hope not. That's not something that just anyone would have been able to do. You did it because you have the skills. Yep, yep. The other adults don't believe in the departed. You're the only one I can rely on to protect us. So please don't apologize for caring about us. We're really grateful to you. Michiho. Thank you. Don't start crying in front of your children. You're 40 years old. Oh god, here we go. Even after experiencing many terrible things, they never lose their smiles. They never turn away from the terror looking into darkness. Instead, they're trying to fight against it. Oh, I thought of it. Okay. I may have to. I'm gonna get ready again. <laughs> I mean, I didn't block it last time. I don't think... Oh, okay. I don't know if it is because they're brave or have a strong sense of justice. One thing's for sure, though. What those two are doing is not something that just anyone will be capable of. Wait, did... Oh, I skipped. Witnessing their strength and resolve has given me courage. Encouragement. The two of them shine brightly like a beacon in the darkness. It's the power of a waifu. Mr. Yashki, there's something I'm curious about. Is it a part really hiding in your school? Yes, Izumi and I said they're pretending to be human. Do you know who they are? No, unfortunately. They were cautious foe, disguising themselves and leaving no clues at all. Mr. Yashki, would you like to try deducing the body's true identity with us? All nice idea. Let's give it a shot. Three heads are better than two. Yeah, sure. We better try it. The suggestion piques my interest. Who knows? Maybe they actually can tell the departed's presence. Feel, sure. Oh, new music. So the departed is targeting those who are close to you, right? Who they know your circle of friends and who you're close to, though? Who would they know you're wealthy? How? How? Since they're spirits, they might have used their supernatural powers to figure it out. Or they might have discovered it when pretending to be a human at the school. Why don't you try exploring that option? If you assume they're just using powers, that won't leave us any path to reduce anything. There's only a handful of people who know about I and Show at the school. First up is my clients and the headmaster of the school, Mr. Conway. Since I report everything related to the case to him, I would have learned a thing or two about me during the process. Next, we have the curriculum coordinator, Sakamoto. A serious and cantankerous individual, she might have heard things about me from Mr. Conway and her colleagues. Next, the male student's name Harukai Abe. 
For some reason, he knows a lot about me and my connections. He became a spirit doctor, so he may know about the mark bearers too. And then we have Himeko Doryu. And Michiho Kinokawa. Both of them have been working with me, so they know I am show as well. Is there a pattern among them? If so, who is it? Can I say first? In any case, if I go with my first hypothesis, my very, very, very first one, it would be Michiho. But more and more as time goes on, I'm thinking it's Konoe. I may be wrong. Abe is just... I mean, Abe was there from the very beginning. Abe was there from the very beginning. He showed up in the prologue while I was... Was it a prologue? No. He showed up in the... Um, on the second chapter, on the backgrounds. He was just suspicious male back then. He didn't have a picture, but then he developed a picture and became a character, apparently important. I don't think it's Sakamoto. I may be wrong on this, because this game loves throwing curveballs, I think her relation to the game is a little bit different. I don't think it's Sakamoto. Though Himeko and Michiho, they got attacked, just so did Konoe. The fact that they got attacked by ghosts kind of throws them off, but hmm. It may just be like trying to get some kind of um, sympathy. Also, it wasn't the party that attacked them. I don't know. I'm gonna say Mr. Conway. You know what? Screw it. If that is true. It means this whole investigation is part of the party's plan. All the notices and the students' disappearances without traps to lure you out. Whoa, so it's like a mastermind pulling the strings behind the scenes. He's been operating under the impression that the part of us females since they preferred themselves as a bride. So why would they have assumed the form of a man when they could have just easily taken a female form? This isn't as easy as I thought. I just don't have enough clues to deduce to the party's true identity yet. I can only press on with investigation. All the while wondering who are my allies, who are my enemies. Before I realize it, a long time has passed. I can I can't just keep these girls out when they're already broken the curfew. We better leave the infirmary as soon as we're ready. Hmm. So Conway, the teacher, this creep, the two female students. Um, Sakamoto. Miss Sakamoto said the notices were just some pointless pranks pulled by the students. Why she just trying to throw us off the scent? The departed is quite meticulous, issuing a notice before killing someone. That is pretty in line with Sakamoto's behavior. But Sakamoto's been the most hostile person I've ever met here. The polar opposite of the departed, caused me the her dear, me dear hus husband. If her hatred is on me is a ruse, she's got some amazing action chops. Okay. Uh, Abe. Abe is quite popular among the second years. I mean, he's kind of a cre of creepy, and no one has any idea what's going on in his head. It's really funny observing him. Dealing with him is a pain in the butt, though. I've been operating under the impression that the part of us female... Oh, okay, it's the same thing. So I would have assumed the form of a man, but it could have just as easily taken a female form. It's a big old game of werewolf. Something that the kids nowadays know as Among Us. 
but it's a big old game of werewolf. He was he told you. I'm not the departed. I'm terrified of the spooky stuff. Too bad he made that isn't enough to prove your innocence. Who knows? Maybe you transform into the departed when I'm not looking. Come on, that's such a bad joke. However, Dorio was targeted by the departed. She was even attacked when we were investigating Hanako. It's hard to imagine her as the departed. I don't even want to think about it. Hmm. It's Chimeco uh, the departed. What are you saying? There is no way Michio's. Calm down, Hime. He's just working through our options. You have to consider our possibilities. Given how I'm being super friendly towards you, I could be suspicious. You're wrong, though. However, Michio was targeted by the departed. She was also attacked when we were, when we were investigating Kashima. It's hard to imagine her as the departed, so I don't even want to consider it. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go with this. After closing up the special building, we leave the school. Um, Mr. Yashki, would you mind sharing more details about this case with us? Maybe it can help you come up with something. Well, you have a point, but... You don't want us to get involved. It's too late for that. You've already been targeted by the departed. You're some of these cases the only way we're getting out of normal, uh, normal, blah, 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 our normal lives back. That's why both of us want to help you out. Please let us help, Mr. Yashki. Fine, alright. Is that a... That's a dog in the game. God damn it. Fine, alright. How did death's grotesque occult phenomena... Phenomena. The fear of being targeted by the departed. My heart is overburns with all this stress. I want to let it all out. I just want to vent to someone. Anyone. So once you still press me, I give in easily. Opening up like an unlocked diary. Spilling the details of the incidents up to this point. How Horikoshi and Manabe were killed by spirits. Diamond's hospitalization. As well as the female doll and the numerous visions she showed me. Something I didn't even tell the mark bearers. Guess that's just about everything. <laughs> Asshole. Both of them stare at me, stunned. They must find it hard to believe. Honestly, it'd be more of a shock if they did believe it. Um, Mr. Yashki. That doll in red dress. We know her. Say what? We saw her before at the clock tower. On the day we arrived, we received this curse. What curse? I'm not following you. What a turn of events. Have to ask for details. But the curse. Um. Is it okay if I tell him, Hime? He literally saved our lives. We cut off the pen on him. We either come clean or we die dirty. Only because I'm sure you believe us, Mr. Yashki. Alright. Micho looks serious, which isn't a. I think I know what they're gonna talk about. Huh. Yeah, I think I know what is gonna happen. Proceed. You can see them, can't you? My- <laughs> Yep. <laughs> He's the only one who can see the white hair and the mark on their face. Huh. No one else can see that they are different. This is why I thought it was kind of weird, like a prestigious school allowing students with such, like... A prestigious, not even prestigious school, mind you. A prestigious school in Japan before the 2000s. 
allowing students to have such outrageous appearance. It's just outrageous. It's most unorthodox. That kind of thing. I guess it makes sense now. It's a curse. Yeah, they really stand out. To tell the truth, other people can see them. What? Aside from us, the only one who can see them is you. That's impossible, but how? Now that I think about it, there was definitely something off. Furious never even tried to hide a mark from the others, and none of the mark bearers have ever commented on Michiho's white hair. Yeah, and the only time we, we thought about that, it was an inside thought. It all makes sense now, it's because I'm the only one who can see them. We've been this way ever since we met the doll. This must be the doll's curse. Hmm. It was two months ago during summer break. We went to the clock tower for the school's 70th anniversary project. Oh yeah, when not you guys planning to get the clock tower moving again? Yes, we wanted to inspect the inside of the tower before moving on with the project. That was when we saw a female doll in red dress placed on the altar. How did you guys release the curse? Did the doll move? No, she was just sitting on the altar. It immediately gave us both the chills, so we decided to get out of the tower. But it was too late. We were already cursed. The woes of being cursed. Why didn't I ever mention the curse? We actually told the dorm manager about it before, but she didn't believe us. She thought we were just being weird kids. It was really hard on us. After that, we decided to not speak about it to anyone else. Dorio suddenly cast her eyes downwards. It seems like this has really taken a toll on her and Mitchell. After that, we meet you. I thought I noticed you staring at my mark. I was wondering whether you could see it back then. You remember you complimented my hair before? That convinced me you were the only one who could see these things. I was really happy about that. Mitchell said we should talk about it with you, but I was afraid. I was scared you'd look at us weird. However, tonight, I finally got the courage. You didn't get the courage, you became the, the subject. What? A coincidental subject. What? The courage. The, I spit on you. Why am I the only one who can see these things, though? Nah, not sure about why is that. You had a whole game to figure it out. Why are you asking that only on the second one? And there are more spiritual occurrences that are only visible to you. Maybe your curse is like that. So it is. Uh, so is this another effect of my gifted supernatural sense? I recall the mark that was carved on my body. Oh, my body four months ago. It was a death curse. Undoubtedly, the curse also has the power to bring misfortune upon them. Have you experienced anything strange ever since you got the curse? Like a health condition, hearing or seeing things? Nothing at the moment. I'm not sleep deprived and I still have my normal appetite. How about you, Hime? I'm fine too. I knew it. This curse is bad news, right? Mm, I mean, it's called a curse for a reason. Don't scare me like that. I feel like I've probably gotten all the information I need from these at the moment. From them. From these. From these things. Mr. Yashki. I've been thinking about this for a while, but do you think that the part of true identity is? That doll? Nah. No. Nah. No. Mm -mm. Nah. 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 It isn't. No. I don't think it is. I think it's something else. Don't think so. She put a curse on us though. Isn't she like bad news? I don't... She's not innocent. Let's put it like that. I'm sure she's, she's the departed. 
Evil spirits that were sealed in the clock tower have come out. And I'm sure that was our fault. But she looks different from the departed. If the departed can transform into a human, they can probably turn into other things too. Even with this curse of ours, is the departed's doing. That means it should be lifted once they're gone. Ichigo gives an abnormally loud shout. She, se she seems to really believe the female star was the departed. She was already investigating spirits and the departed when they first met. I understand why she was going that now. She wasn't my rival, she was trying to find a way to lift her curse. If what Michigo said is true, the departed's case is just something that's happening randomly. They're incidents that both of us caused. Toryu. We have to put an end to this case. Please, let us help you out. I've learned information from the two of them. The evil darkness around the Konohara Academy continues to deepen. I wonder when that darkness will finally be cleared away and replaced by sunshine. When we arrive at the dormitory, the door manager is waiting for us. Given the fact that they broke the curfew and returned this late at night, it's no wonder she's being herself beside herself with rage. But I've already learned the trick of dealing with her from an earlier phone call. She's only concerned about who is going to be held responsible for all this. Once I promise her that I won't tell the school about the curfew violation, she takes it down several notches. I say goodbye to Dorian and Michiko and leave the dormitory. Time to head back to Kujo Mansion. More coffee, go to sleep! You know there is a limit to how much coffee can actually affect your body. Like at some point your body is going to create a tolerance to it, to the caffeine. And you're just going to think like, oh, I need more coffee. And then when you think like, hmm, I'm not getting, I don't feel more energetic, but why is my heart exploding? It's literally that. Also, you have a little shrine on top of your shelf. I like that. Is that? It might be. A tool. A, uh, a little thing from the previous. Also, what is this island picture over here? What, what is like this one piece pen art you have on the wall? That I start contemplating all the reports I need, compiling all the reports I need to submit to Mr. Conway, accompanied by a cup of sweet coffee. I should have summarized this. If I mention the clock tower incidents, I'm going to have to bring up the girls breaking curfew as well. I will betray the doll manager and ruin the image of those two students. Guess I should just stick to mentioning the bogles. The black telephone rings loudly. Who's calling me this late at night? Hello? Can the here? Hello? Oh, I wasn't expecting you to call this soon. How did you get this number? Never mind. Before we parted ways, I gave them the number of the Kujo mansion just in case. I just didn't imagine that she'd be using this number too soon. So what did you call? I just wanted to hear your voice. Your calm voice makes me feel relaxed. Don't you get that a lot? What are you going on about? Anyway, what do you want to talk about? I have a question for you. Let's say... What if I is the departed? Can you beat her? Excuse me? Why are you asking something like that? Well, the departed's hiding in your school and you have no idea who it is. I just don't know what I'd do if Hime turns out to be- Ah, okay. Hime turned out to be the departed. Just thinking about it makes me feel depressed. Hence why I wanted to talk to you. So could you attack Ai if she's the departed? I, I mean, I'm gonna assume that she's asking this as if 
either the departed is possessing like in like in grounds of possession as we saw uh, a while ago and maybe like skin snatching kind of thing skin crawl skin what's the name of the movie replacements like literally among the situation like an imposter it is not uh, the girl herself so under this grounds of either possession or body snatching would i be able to attack i if i figure out that is the cause yes i guess that's the only option we have huh more people will die if the departed is allowed to continue existing we have to take them down hmm the only thing I can do for those who have to become spirits to save their souls. Ah, that's so like you. As if you are at ease somehow. <clears throat> somehow. <clears throat> somehow. Voice crack. Hope that helps. Thanks for answering my childish question, Mr. Yashki. You really are suited to be a teacher. I love that you have that honesty. Don't say weird things on the phone. Oops, I didn't take a bath. Don't say weird things on the phone. Good night, Mr. Yashki. Too much information. I hang up the phone once the conversation's over. I need to wash off my sweats and get some shut eye too. I collapse onto my bed. When I close my eyes, the smiles of the two girls are safe tonight run through my mind. My tension melts away. For the first time in days, I experienced that pleasant bliss of floating to dreamlands, unburdened by the past few days' events. However, I know this tranquility is fleeting at best. Once a new notice arrives, I have to face the spectre again. Yay! What time is it? Only one hour and a half- wow. That was a short one. 